When you hear ancient Egyptians, you immediately think of Egypt and the pyramids, but I can bet that America does not come to mind, at least of all, the Grand Canyon. But what happens when the Grand Canyon becomes an ancient Egyptian site and the home to giant coffins? Well, let's find out. It all started in 1908 when President Theodore Roosevelt wanted to declare the Grand Canyon's off-limits to all timber and mining operations and it would take another 11 years for the Grand Canyon to be designated as a national park by Congress. Seeing this as a last opportunity, explorer G. E. Kincaid took a boat down the Colorado River and through the Grand Canyon. The area is rich in minerals like gold and copper and Kincaid wanted to see what he would find before the area was closed off. But instead of gold, Kincaid found something more intriguing than gold and copper. About 40 miles up the river from El Tovar Crystal Canyon, Kincaid saw stains in the sedimentary formation about 2,000 feet up. Upon seeing this, he tied up the boat and got out to investigate. Kincaid could not find a trail, but after a short hike, he found something interesting covered in the desert brush. Hundreds of steps were carved in sandstone, steps that led up to a high shelf on the side of the canyon. He followed the steps until he came across a cavern entrance that was man-made. Kincaid entered the cavern and turned on his flashlight. The walls of the cave were covered in writing, but it was not English or Native American as expected. Instead, it was ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics. Kincaid lifted his flashlight and realized the tunnel ran into the distance. It was clear when G.E. Kincaid tied his boat to study the stains of the sediment formation, he expected to find clues that would lead him to mineral deposits, and he was not expecting to find hieroglyphics. Kincaid noticed chisel marks on the wall, and upon seeing this, he drew his pistol, turning on another light and walking slowly into the room. Kincaid kept a detailed note of everything he saw. In his notes, he stated that the main passageway was about 12 feet wide, narrowing to 9 feet toward the farther end. Then about 57 feet from the entrance, the first side passages branch off to the right and left, along on which both sides are a number of rooms about the size of ordinary living rooms today, though some are 40 square feet. G.E. Kincaid realized that he was in a huge complex, and he estimated that as many as 50,000 people could have lived in the complex. In some rooms, he found granaries with shelves of glazed pottery, many of which still contained seeds. He found cooking areas and a huge dining hall. The rooms were full of ancient artifacts, of which Kincaid carefully wrapped a few small metal and ceramic objects for a later study. Kincaid saw another study, which he describes as a room for metalwork, which was a technology that should have not existed in this particular area. Kincaid found tools of all descriptions made with copper, which led him to conclude that the people who inhabited the complex must have had mastered the lost art of hardening metal, which has been tried by chemicals, but unfortunately with no results. He explored the underground complex for several hours and was still determining when it was built, when it was used, what it was for, and who the builders were. Kincaid came across another room that seemed to be a crypt. The crypt had shelf upon shelf and row upon row of, of mummies. It seemed like there were dozens, and at this point, Kincaid realized that if he's going to explore the entire underground city, he's going to need help. Along with his findings and notes, Kincaid forwarded a few articles to the Smithsonian. He continued by asking for assistance with finances and logistics for what he considered to be the most important archaeological find ever made. The Smithsonian agreed, and a few weeks later, Professor J.A. Jordan arrived with a team of about 40 scientists, researchers, and laborers to excavate and explore the ancient underground city. With more lights and manpower, the scientists realized that the cave system layout was anything but random. Instead, it was a symmetrical, deliberate design, and the tunnels all led to a central chamber. The central chamber contained a statue that Kincaid thought looked like Buddha. The cast of the face of the statue was oriental, and he seemed to be holding a lotus or a lily flower. Scientists are not certain as to what religious worship it represents, but with all that had been uncovered, it seems that it relates to the ancient people of Tibet. The entire cave system was explored by Kincaid, Jordan, and the Smithsonian team, and they were inundated with proof that there wasn't just some remote temple inhabited by a few people, but rather was a home to men, women, and children who had likely lived there for hundreds or thousands of years. Now the big question is, who are these people? By the end of the expedition, G.E. Kincaid and Professor Jordan's team had discovered hundreds of rooms, barracks, granaries, metalworking shops, temples, and many living quarters. Though most of the rooms were empty, thousands of artifacts were found. Despite all evidence Jordan and Kincaid had, they were still no closer to discovering who built the citadel in the Grand Canyon. The statue looked Tibetan, but it was not quite right. The writings looked Egyptian, but again, they were not quite right. With all the experts on site, they still couldn't explain the statue or translate any of the text. But there were two things that the researchers could conclude. The civilization that built the citadel was advanced even more than the ancient tribe that inhabited the area, and they used bronze even before the Bronze Age. Everything about this tribe went against anything that was taught in mainstream archaeology and anthropology because a civilization like this should not have existed. 
Kincaid and S.A. Jordan sent boxes of artifacts and books full of notes and drawings back to the Smithsonian along with their hypothesis that an ancient civilization existed at the Grand Canyon that was technologically advanced and lived there thousands of years before Native Americans arrived in North America, and they originated somehow from Egypt or Asia. Kincaid wanted more resources and a larger team to help research the Citadel and search the Grand Canyon for more evidence of this lost civilization. The request was denied and G.E. Kincaid and S.A. Jordan were never heard from again. The Grand Canyon is a spiritual symbol to tribes that stay around it. Several tribes believe that the first humans, who were reptiles, came out of the canyon and turned into humans, and another tribe believes that a race of giants was there. There might be some truth as there have been rumors of skeletons of giants that have been discovered all over the western United States, but the Smithsonian has suppressed the evidence. This brings the question of why would the Smithsonian want to suppress this evidence? The articles that told the story of G.E. Kincaid's discovery were written off as a hoax by the Smithsonian, who said they did not meet any Kincaid and that they did not receive any artifacts. Kincaid himself tried to discourage people from trying to find the Citadel. Maybe it was an order from the Smithsonian or it was to protect his discoveries. We will never know. But even a hundred years later, this did not stop people from trying to find the Citadel, and some people claim to have found it. For years, Jerry Willis and his wife Kathy have been researching the mystery surrounding the Kincaid Cave. Their strategy was to track down the original explorer's base camps, which would lead them to the cave. After years of research and exploring the area where G.E. Kincaid said he found the cave, Jerry and Kathy were able to find a location covered in artifacts from that time and on the canyon walls just below the area that they believed was the entrance to the underground city. Exploration proved difficult as the entire area where the cave is supposed to be is off limits by federal government. A thousand caves have been discovered in the Grand Canyon, some are man-made, but only 30 have been mapped and many of those have been sealed. The government claimed that the cave was sealed for safety reasons. It seems the government is trying to keep people out to hide something. Another reason some caves in the Grand Canyon have been sealed is supposedly to protect the bat population. Despite these, people have been willing to risk imprisonment to find the lost city, but anyone who goes looking should be sure of a response. When Jerry and Kathy's team explored the area, all of a sudden, an unmarked plane appeared, which clearly shows that they were being watched. But the surprising thing is that the particular area is a no-fly zone. Jerry Willis was convinced this is a warning and his team could not continue their expedition. Another group tried to explore the canyon from below like Kincaid, but while they were doing so, an aircraft appeared. Not a civilian helicopter, but rather an Apache combat helicopter. When this same team tried to look for the ventilation shaft Kincaid talked about, they found mysterious cement blocks in the middle of nowhere. Ancient mounds in the American Midwest are examined. They showed existence of a complex culture in cities larger than those in Europe at the time. And they also feature the burials of extremely tall people, sometimes as tall as seven or eight feet. When Spiro's mounds were excavated in the 1930s, seven and eight feet tall skeletons were found at a time when the height of an average male was five feet six inches. But those skeletons are nowhere to be found today. Frank Burns made a discovery of stone coffins in Alabama in 1892 while conducting a geological survey. The coffins were seven and a half inches long, hollowed out by fire and metal chisels. The findings were sent to the Smithsonian, and in 1984, they were asked about it. They said they had not been able to find the specimen, but records show it was received. Findings like this have been made several times, and any time the Smithsonian steps in, the findings go missing. So what exactly is the Smithsonian hiding, and why are they covering up all these findings? Could there be a reason why the government is covering up an ancient city? Or does it even exist at all? Tell me, what are your thoughts? Leave them below in the comments.